In this video, I'm going to be making a composite beam out of scrap wood. In the, g'day, welcome to Chestnut Nag. My name is Stuart Jingle. So in the last video I did where I was unboxing those axes, I, I asked the question, hey, what do you think of my, um, my new shelter for my, for my workbench? The thing is, it didn't work because those, you know, those pop-up gazebos, they're just not strong enough to leave up. Um, they'll just get trashed by the wind. So, and what I've done is I've lashed up this frame out of the, the leftover bush poles that I had from the thatch workshop, uh, but I've run out and I need one more to form the ridge. So I'm gonna be returning to something that I haven't done in a while and that's making up a composite beam from the scrap wood that I've got about the place. Now, a lot of this stuff I get from a skip outside of a uh, factory where they're just throwing it away. Um, a lot of it is really good wood. That's all, uh, most of that's actually oak. And these, these are all rejects. Uh, and it comes in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Uh, but what I think I'm gonna to use today for the composite beam as the main bit is, um, is these bits. Um, now the main thing I'm trying to get across with this video is that you can make up some really strong beams with materials that you, would, you wouldn't think would be strong enough to be structural. Uh, and while I'm gonna be using timber, you can use ply, and, or you can use pallet timber, or you can use you know, whatever you can find. And if you understand how these composite beams are put together, you can pretty much use whatever you can get hold of. Now with these composite beams, the different you know, bits that make up the composite do different jobs. Now these pieces are gonna be making up the bottom and top cords, but then we need to something to form the web between the, the cords. Now you can use all different patterns for the web and depending on what you're using depends on what pattern you wanna use. Now with this one, because they're relatively thin, um, narrow pieces of wood, I used uh, diagonals interspersed with verticals. These ones are more the others that I made ages ago and I just, used, I just did diagonals. But if you're using plywood, then you just use solid strips. Now I made this, oh, I don't know how long ago, but the kids really enjoy jumping around on the roof and running around on it, yeah. and it's still up more than fine. Now, something I should say at this point is if you're gonna be making these beams up to use for yourself, you've gotta be really aware of the safety. Uh, now for you know, a woodshed like that, um, for holding up a tarp like I'm gonna be doing for this structure, it's no big deal. It's just gotta, it's just gotta hold its shape and it'll be fine. But if you were to build a larger shed or heaven forbid even a house you can do it but first of all you want to get some engineering done uh, and you can learn the calculations on how to do that in most jurisdictions um, they won't let you do it yourself uh, but regardless of the legalities uh, the bigger structures get the more dangerous they get and if they fall if they fail people can get seriously hurt so for small stuff around your home, woodsheds, cubbies, whatever, then most of the time you can get away with just over-engineering them. Like I just did, decided to do with the beam, I'm gonna make it a 10 inch web um, instead of a, you know, a six or an eight inch wedge. Six or eight is probably enough. Uh, and for stuff like this, where you're not really asking it to do much, that's perfectly fine. Now, one of the biggest things that uh, determines how strong these composite beams are is how far apart the top and bo bottom cord is held by the web. And that's because the strength of a beam is proportional to the square of its depth, whereas the strength of a beam is only linearly a portion, uh, proportional to you know, its width. But the, something else you need to remember is the ability of a load to break a beam is proportional to the cube of the span and so the, the the longer that a beam gets in terms of its span but not just a lineal increase it has to be a lot stronger uh, now for the web what i'm going to use for the web for this beam is this stuff right here i've got masses of these there must have been some sort of run that they did and at the time i just kind of just grabbed them for fire whatever but since i've got a whole stack that are and this is the important thing all the same thickness that's gonna be great for the web um, because you want your web to be all the same thickness because you're going to have a, the bottom and top and cord sandwiching it and if the web's different thicknesses then that's going to make the gluing and the screwing uh, a, bit of a bit of a pain in the bum. What I'm doing here is setting up a stop so that all the pieces for the web will be the same size and I can cut them you know, all at the same time and get it all done. I'm using that's a better. 45 degree angle here uh, because it's Maybe much easier to do it to set it up and the uh, all the cuts that you have to do will then be the same angle. A 60, 30 degree web angle is another common uh, 
configuration, but it's a little bit more fiddly because you've got to do, well, two cuts at 60 degrees and two cuts at 30 degrees. The other thing that makes it easier is working out how long the pieces need to be. Now, of course, they're on a diagonal, so they need to be longer than the spread between the top and bottom cords. And with a 45 degree angle, it's really, really simple is that I can use my Japanese square because on one side of a Japanese square are you know, your regular dimensions and on the other side is the diagonal scales. Once your stop is set, you just uh, put the piece of wood up against it, do a 45 degree cut, turn it over and do a, a 45 degree cut, flip it so you're cutting the other end, do a 45 degree cut and then turn it over and do a fourth 45 degree angle cut and you're done. <laughs> I've realized I've just made a mistake. Something I forgot to account for when I cut the first one though, diagonal piece needs to go from the top of the top cord to the bottom of the bottom cord. Bit of a silly mistake, but I hadn't made one of these for a while, so I'd, I'd forgotten that. Something that occurred to me when I made this mistake, making it bigger can actually use less material because when you make it bigger, each diagonal piece covers more distance and therefore you need less diagonal pieces per length of beam. That means less pieces of wood, but it also means less screws, less glue, and less time setting the whole thing up and putting it together. Okay, if you've got to get it into a particular space, maybe you've got to design it to that particular space. But in other ways, just make it a bit bigger. Right, that is 28 pieces. didn't mention it when I was doing this filming, but at the either end, I've cut a piece that is uh, set at um, 90 degrees to the top and bottom corner, you know, to just finish the ends. And that um, vertical piece in the web helps me to set the distance between the top and cord, makes it easier to get it neater. Now, if this was a softwood, we could probably get away with pre-drilling, maybe, but because it's hardwood, you have to pre-drill every hole. Not so much because of the holes that you're putting through the cords. Once you get away from the ends, you'd probably be fine. But on every piece of the web, you're always gonna be putting the hole near the end and it will split every time if you don't pre-drill. Rain's coming. Getting quite heavy. Oh yeah now. Oh 
hold that. Right there in the middle. Hard as you can. Harder! Harder! Oh, click! Go! Don't let go! I can let him go. It's like you're thinking about it. I don't think you're going to go. Oh, there they go! Right. Now I remembered why I did that the vertical diagonal vertical pattern and that was to maintain the proper spacing uh, between the top and the bottom cord because the cord wood it's long it's not dead straight and if you don't keep on referencing uh, the separation it's very easy for them to drift and if you saw towards the end there I had a bit of trouble you know keeping them they were out of whack a fair bit and I had to bring them back in it wasn't a big deal and it's you know it's annoying it's one of those neat things time has passed the much rain has fallen and I've got the beam finished uh, I've uh, I, I, I didn't get it on film but I've added a screw to each piece of the timber from each side and I've stiffened up the joins in the top and bottom cord now we've got to get it up on the frame ready to spread the tarp over it I think I'll stop that video here uh, because the beam is now done and this, this video is about the beam. Um, if you want to see me putting it up, Ooh. well then maybe you should subscribe and hit the bell notification so when I do that video you'll get notified. So if you like this video and you want to show some support for the channel you can do the simple things like uh, liking and commenting or the, you know, the extra commitment of sharing the video because those things all convince the, the artificial algorithm peoples that you know, someone finds that he's, this stuff that I do useful. Uh, if you want to show some extra support, you can pop over to Patreon and join the small but very generous, generous and dedicated community of peoples there. Not, I guess, to really support what I do on this channel, but more a case of saying, Stuart, we like what you do and we want to make it a little bit easier for you to do it. And it'd be cool, it'd be appreciated. Um, but due to a whole range of circumstances, which you will get a, a, a grip on if you hang around this channel, I do stuff when I can. I don't make any promises to any, any regularity of schedule or even producing content at all sometimes. I do what I can when I can. Um, you can also check out what I've got on eBay because um, you know buying stuff from my stock helps me out as well. Of course, if you buy it directly from me, you know, via getting in touch with me via YouTube or Facebook rather than going via eBay, prices are cheaper. So hope you enjoyed. Till next time when we get this beam up and I'll catch you in on. Oh and stay tuned. I'm, I'm, one of the reasons I'm keen to get this finished is so I can restore a new sharp edge tool so I can get a haircut because you know due to COVID it is grossly overdue. This fuzz needs to go especially because the kids brushed my hair the other day and it just went so yeah see you later.